This is the new Mac Mini M4 Pro and it quite honestly has blown me away. Not only is this Mac insanely powerful, but there's a whole bunch of new tech in here and the fact that it's all packed into this super small form factor is kind of crazy. I've been using it for the last week or so, testing out everything I can while also using it for my entire workflow from design and video editing to programming and 3D work and that's given me a pretty good idea of what this machine can do. There's also some things that I've come across that I think can be confusing or people should know about if you're considering buying one of these. And today I'm getting into all of that and what the whole experience has been like on the new Mac Mini. So if you want to know more about the Mini or really any of the new M4 Pro machines for that matter, stick around and let's get into it. Hey everyone, Kyle Erickson here. I've always been a huge fan of the Mac Mini. Back when I first switched over to a Mac for programming, it was really the only Mac that I could afford, and even back then, over a decade ago, it was small enough that I could fit into my backpack and carry around with me to and from work, which I did for almost a year before I had enough money to buy a MacBook. Still to this day, the Mini is a relatively cheap point of entry starting at 599 USD and it's now smaller than ever with it having a 5x5 inch surface area and it's only 2 inches tall and in my opinion looks fantastic. It's a full aluminum body with a plastic bottom similar to the previous generation but the one subtle difference that I really like on the new version is they've added this raised ring around the bottom so the plastic won't scratch up like it used to. Just looking at it, it definitely gives off a Baby Mac Studio vibe. It's super easy to place at pretty much any desk regardless of size, and I love that there are already a lot of creative ways that people are finding to set it up. I 3D printed this little Mac Pro case that needs to be cleaned up and sanded a bit still, but I think these look super cool, and I might actually build an epoxy mold and make a G3 iMac or G4 Cube inspired case, which let me know in the comments if you guys would like to see something like that, but putting that aside and talking about the functional aspects of the design, I think this is really well thought out. The ports fill out the back of the Mini, and the nice thing is they're still all placed in the aluminum housing versus the plastic that was on the last gen, although the power button has been moved to the bottom, which a lot of people don't seem to like, but I honestly don't really care about. It's not very often that I ever touch the power button on these machines, and it's not like the previous gen was the most accessible either, or that it's hard to just tilt up and press. It is only 1.6 pounds, and I think the ports themselves make up for any shortcomings there. Not only do you have an Ethernet, HDMI, and three Thunderbolt ports along the back, there's now two USB-C ports on the front, which is much nicer for things that you only want to connect once in a while. Say if you want to charge an accessory or plug in a portable drive to transfer something over, rather than trying to reach around the back every time you need to plug something in. The same goes for the 3.5mm headphone jack which was moved to the front. I always found that to be a nightmare to use on the old Mini where it was right beside the USB-A ports and was pretty easily obstructed, so to me this is just thought out a lot better. Those front USB ports also top out at a max of 10 gigabits per second which is going to be fine for almost everything, but if you've got an external SSD or an accessory that runs higher than that, that will be a bottleneck and you'll have to move to the ports on the back where there are some things that you should know about. Depending on which chipset you choose with the Mini, you're either going to get one of two Thunderbolt specs. The regular M4 chip will come with Thunderbolt 4, while the M4 Pro which I have here comes with Thunderbolt 5, which runs three times faster than Thunderbolt 4 at 120 gigabits per second in total bandwidth. That means when Thunderbolt 5 accessories come out, which there aren't very many of at the moment, Things like external SSDs will potentially run at almost the same speed as the internal drives, and Thunderbolt 5 does bring some other notable changes that Apple doesn't really reference, and can be somewhat confusing. You might see some Thunderbolt 5 specifications saying that it supports USB 3.2 Gen 2x2, but that the minimum target is USB 3.2 Gen 2. These are both just USB specs where Gen 2x2 runs twice as fast as Gen 2, and Apple has never supported it and still doesn't with these new machines. So if you're shopping for a portable drive for any of the new Thunderbolt 5 Macs, just be aware that Gen 2x2 drives like the Crucial X10 that I have here 
or any drive that advertises a speed of 20 gigabits or 2000 megabytes per second is going to effectively run at half that speed. Accessories or drives that offer a 10 gigabit transfer speed are still fine and USB 4 or Thunderbolt 4 accessories still work well and run at about the same speed as on Thunderbolt 4 Max, but I just wanted to make that clarification in case anyone is getting tripped up on that wording. As far as external display support goes, there is a slight difference between this M4 Pro version from the regular M4 version, where if you're running an 8K monitor at 60Hz, adding another monitor can run at higher specs, which I'd say 99% of people won't have to worry about, and they'll both run up to three monitors at almost any resolution. I've just been using the studio display without any issues there, but it is nice to know that that's future-proof for anything else that I want to get down the line, but that pretty much takes care of the things that we can actually see on the Mac Mini, and in my opinion, it's on the inside that's the most impressive. I plan on using this as my main Mac for the foreseeable future, so I've bumped up the specs on here quite a bit. This particular machine has the M4 Pro with a 14-core CPU, 20-core GPU, 48 gigs of memory, and a 1TB SSD, which costs $2199 USD. For reference, that's the same price as the current base Mac Studio with the storage capacity bumped up to match, or the base M4 Pro MacBook Pro, again with a 1TB storage option, but this Mini is a bit more powerful than either of those. In Geekbench, you see about a 45% increase in single core performance over the M2 Max Mac Studio, and the same performance with the base M4 Pro. Multi-core is 53% better than the base Mac Studio and 10% better than the base M4 Pro, and the GPU is around 13% better in the Studio, but 12% better over the base M4 Pro. Just keep in mind that the M4 Pro does have hardware accelerated ray tracing built into the GPU where the Studio does not, so for anything that takes advantage of that, like gaming or Blender, the M4 Pro is going to perform much better than the Studio. Similarly, Xcode benchmark scores are 24% faster than the Studio and 12% faster than the base M4 MacBook, which I suppose is somewhat notable. But these are mostly just synthetic benchmarks, so let's talk about what that means in real-world testing. From what I've experienced so far, I notice a slight difference on the M4 Pro Mac Mini for video editing over my M3 Pro that I've been using over the last year, where everything just feels a tad more snappy, and encoding and decoding footage feels like it works a touch better. Rendering out videos has improved somewhat as well, where this M4 Pro rendered out a 10 minute video a minute and 27 seconds faster than the M3 Pro, which I did actually find somewhat surprising given that doesn't normally change a whole lot. Rendering video is usually bottlenecked by the media engine itself, and on paper these haven't really changed, and usually the only increase you see is in the Max chips because they have dual encoding and decoding engines, where the Pro chips just have one. But that is a pleasant surprise, and maybe partially due to the memory bandwidth, getting a bump from 150GB per second on the M3 Pro to 273 on the M4 Pro. Memory bandwidth can have an effect on very demanding tasks, and that, coupled with the new GPU, makes things like 3D modeling and gaming much smoother on the M4 Pro over the last generation. Blender feels quite a bit smoother overall, and a render that took a minute and 28 seconds on my M3 Pro MacBook only took 49 seconds on the M4 Pro Mac Mini. With gaming, everything has felt very fluid on the Mini, even though this isn't technically a gaming machine, where I'm seeing a steady 60 FPS in games like No Man's Sky and Rust at 4K resolution. Some folks last week were asking about heat and fan noise with some of these more resource-heavy tasks, and I will say that most of the time, things are totally silent, where so far the only time that I'll hear the fan kick on is when I'm in a complex scene in Blender or rendering something out within it, or on rare occasions where I'm gaming or I'm stress testing the machine. Heat has been fine as well, and I've never felt like it's throttled my performance in any way. Other basic tasks have felt largely the same, like graphic design, photo editing, and programming, which is to be expected given they aren't as resource intensive in my case. With programming, I'm usually just working on simple web and mobile projects, and Xcode Benchmark should give you a pretty good indication of performance increases if you're building out much larger projects that would normally take longer, but this thing really is an absolute beast. 
As someone who used the M2 Max Max Studio for quite a while, I would say that this M4 Pro Mini outperforms it in general use. And with 48 gigs of RAM on here, there's more than enough space for anything that I'm gonna touch over the next few years at the very least. When it comes to the storage, that's not a whole lot different than the last generation or two where you will see very fast speeds on the internal drive that are much faster than the 512 gig drives below it. But honestly, it's really hard to make any kind of real world distinction between most of Apple's internal SSD drive speeds, even on the lower speed ones in the models below this. Just like the storage, wireless connectivity remains pretty much unchanged between the Mini and every other Mac that's come out over the last couple of years, with it having Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.3. That produces good overall speeds and there's been no connection drops at all, but I will say the range is much better on this Mac Mini over a MacBook if I've got the MacBook at my desk in clamshell mode. I believe that's to do with where exactly the antennas are located on each machine, and it's not a huge deal, but I do notice it, say, if I'm listening to something and I go upstairs to grab a coffee, the signal stays a lot stronger on the Mini. With all that being said, do I think that most people need all the power that's in this particular machine? Probably not, and you'll be able to get by on the base M4 Pro, or frankly even the base M4 for almost everything, but if you want to bump things up to future-proof yourself a bit, there's a ton of value here. Like I said, this particular Mini is going to be my main machine for quite a while, but I will be switching back and forth between this and the base M4 Pro MacBook Pro, which I'm going to take a deep dive of next week. And I will still be covering the base M4 machines after that's out of the way, so stay tuned for that. But that's all I have for you today. If you have any questions about the Mini or things that you want to know about the standard M4 chip or the base M4 Pro MacBook Pro, Please leave a comment down below. If you found this video useful or enjoyable, feel free to hit that like button. If you'd like to see more tech related content or help me develop a typing coach app that randomly compliments you on your keyboard skills in a Swedish accent, please subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next upload.